Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, and in this video I'm going to show you PipKit, my new picture-in-picture -picture plugin for Final Cut Pro. Now this is the kind of effect you'll be able to get. We've got round cornered boxes. The thing which makes this a little bit special is it's packaged using effects. So I've got a clip here which hasn't had any effects applied. It's just a simple clip above the first clip. Now you can preview the effects just by hovering over them, and there's a wide variety of shapes. There's arrows, there's a circle and square combo, there's a retro four-corner uh, shape which is fully controllable, and there's all kinds of other things including some animated results as well. I'm going to stay simple for the moment. I'll go with the rectangle, and I'll just drag it onto my clip. I'll park the playhead above that, and now you'll see a lot of settings here in the inspector. You can change the overall scale, you can move it into position, and then you can also adjust the scale of the contents, and also the position within the frame. Now you can change the border however you like, you can right click there and quickly change the colour if you want, or do a regular click for the standard system colour picker. Maybe let's go with soft orange like that. And you can change the width up and down, you can change the position of the line, and you can also offset the line so it can be entirely inside the box or entirely outside the box, at whatever thickness you like. Let's have a look at how that animates on, and that looks great. So let's look at another example here. I've got a shot of this mountain in New Zealand, and I've got a circle popping up in the centre of screen, this time with a shadow around the outside. So let's look at that clip, which at the moment is just a regular clip, and I'll try the circle. So there we are. Now I could change the scale and position, whatever else I want. Uh, to turn the edge off entirely, you don't turn the width down, because you can't send it all the way to zero. Instead, turn fade outside or fade inside all the way to 100. Both of these will work. But here's a nice trick. If you set the fade outside to just a bit less than 100, and set the colour to black, then you can get quite a strong shadow effect. Now there is a shadow built in, but it may not be strong enough for your tastes, so just set it to black and play with the fade outside. There you go. Now I've got the scale up medium as the speed for these, but you can also set it to fast or slow. So here is fast, there is medium, and there is slow. Now each of those is mirrored at the other end of the clip. If you enter a clip slow, you'll fade out slow as well. Same with fast. Now these are optional, you can turn the build in and build out off if you like, but there's also an additional set of options here, scale down and scale down with bounce. I'll show you that on the next clip. Now here I'm going from a full screen clip and then I'm going to shrink down to reveal the clip underneath. And this is using the instant picture effect. Now, how do we do that on this clip, which is just a regular clip? Firstly, you switch to the blade, and you click where you want that change to happen. And I'll just go back to the regular select tool. Now you come down to the effect, and any effect is fine, but we'll go with instant picture, drag it onto just that second clip, and set the animation style to scale down. Now at the start of the clip, it's going to seamlessly scale down and reveal the picture underneath. Now you can change all kinds of things about this, you've got a bit of extra height control, and you can move where the text sits, and of course you can rotate the whole thing round, and make the whole thing bigger and smaller if you like, and put this wherever you like, and even round the corners off for a more modern look. Now the next one is pretty useful. A couple of things are going to go on here. Firstly, 
the background's going to blur out. And then we're going to zoom in. Show you that again. Blur, darken, zoom in. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, we want to apply an effect of some kind to that top clip. Let's go to the four corner. And the four corner effect is fully controllable. You can make any four point shape that you like by moving the X and Y horizontal and vertical positions to wherever you like. I might just scale that down a bit though. So how do I control the background element? Well, I need to look at the titles. In Fun With Stuff Pip Kit, we've got Obscure with Fade, Wipe, Wipe and Text, and a Zoom In and Out. So I'm going to choose Obscure with Fade and put it underneath that top clip. And now it's going to darken and blur the clip underneath. This is an adjustment layer, but it's a special adjustment layer that fades in. You can turn the fades on and off, and you can control how long the fades are, as well as how the background clip is affected. And you can even crystallize if you want a really different kind of look. Or you can apply a tint. So that takes care of the background. And of course, you don't have to position that at the very start. You can see the clip for a little bit and then gradually take it down just before the new clip comes in on top. The other title you'll find really helpful here is the zoom in and out. And this is essentially a controllable punch in. So you can control how much you want to zoom in, the speed of the zoom in. Let's make this one fast. And then we've got that and punch. This is an effect that could be really, really useful, even if you're not doing picture in picture effects. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the PipKit transitions. If I go back to this earlier clip and I'll just completely deactivate the build in and build out. So there's no animation on this at all. Well, I can go to the transitions which come with the product. Here we are in Fun With Stuff Pip Kit. I've got in and then below that I've got out. So with these, I can drag it to there. And I'm just going to zoom in so we can see this. Now that's put an in on both sides. I want to replace that one at the end with an out transition. Let's do that. And now I've got a blur in at the start and a move out with motion blur at the end. Now, if I put the playhead exactly on there and select it, you'll see this particular transition actually comes with an on-screen control, so you can control the direction that that flies out in. If you don't want to use the on-screen control, you can just use these controls over here instead. And that blur in, you'll notice that it doesn't affect the background. That's the unique trick of these transitions. You can't just use a regular blur transition that comes with Final Cut. PipKit is available now from fxfactory.com, so check it out, try out the free trial, and see if it's useful. I hope you like it, and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.